WBCB presents Pro Wrestling Weekly. The longest running pro wrestling radio talk show in the history of terrestrial radio. And he's obviously Michael Cole. Call in with a question or comment at 215-949-3232 or 888-922-2149. Talking wrestling. Yeah. Because that's what this show is about. That's what we've been doing for over 16 no, no, years. No, no, no. It's about sports entertainment. And now here are your hosts of Pro Wrestling Weekly. Ferran Derry and Lucas DeSangro. Will you stop marking out over there? Sorry. Move over, kid. I'm taking your microphone. You're shallow. You know that? <laughs> I'm running on two hours of sleep. I don't remember what the hell I do anymore. Shut up! There's the sound of the bell, and we are set to go. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Alongside Lucas Twitch DeSangro, I am Ferran Derry, and we are yeah, we are here and we are live, and Lucas is uh, still getting his act together. He's a little uh, flustered, I guess, as, uh, or thrown Flustered off. isn't the gosh darn word. Yeah, I'm going to... I I see where you went there. This is a bull capote. Frustrated into the f***ing word for it. This is bull I'm going to quote Jim Norton say I don't really feel that good about that one. Injustice around here. I've had it up to here. Well, I don't know about injustice necessarily as, uh, well, you've got a a huge task that you've got (laughs) uh, to undertake later tonight. And I think that might be why, uh, why you're... Even more off your game than usual. <laughs> than usual. Always known how to put a guy over, Ferran. Thank you. Uh, that's what I do. You know how it is. I just... Yes, I, I do, unfortunately. That, that's why I'm here. I'm here to, you know... to No to... selling my sarcasm. Just amazing. A- absolutely. I mean... That's why I... we're best friends. I mean, as we all know... I'm a celebrity now. No! I right. am... I said it. I'm a celebrity. Well, and yeah, you are, because or at least that was meant in tongue in cheek at best. If we can be completely honest, anybody who puts my mug on national TV at this moment should be fired. Wow. I said national television. The MF Network's different. Uh, it's a paid okay. service. That's global. Pa- That's you know, I could get over uh, my my face could get over some places. I guess, like I don't know, a ditch maybe. I'll just leave that on its own. I was gonna you've, just. You've, I'll just. I was gonna say. I'll just bookmark that. You've you've proven your versatility and adaptability as you had so long ago. I'm like Catwoman. I'm adaptable. Oh god! Don't compare yourself to Catwoman. That was yeah. That 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 was uh, how many? That was my first day on the show. I think second maybe second week or whatever. Yeah, that was uh, that was quite a while ago. You. That were, was one uh, of my. That was like my first. That was the first few episodes on the show. I think it might have been the first one. Yeah. That uh, that. Certainly, uh, certainly was a while ago. Uh, in fact, I was going to say to quote Eric, closing in on how many years ago? Four. <laughs> I was going to say, um, and to quote Eric Bischoff, sitting in that motorcycle, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Well, all right, enough, uh, enough Mahoney busting here. Let's get to the matters at hand. We've got, uh, well, we've got I was money. Say, the, oh, I was going to say, what story are we starting with first? Because if that's the case, we might be doing a little bit more Mahoney busting than usual. I mean, I know there's so many different ways we can go with it, but I think we should at least start off with. Uh, we'll save it for the second segment. Well, you know which one I'm talking about. Yeah, we'll save that one for the uh, for the second segment. We've also we've got our prediction certain to go wrong later this hour for Money in the Bank coming up tomorrow, as uh, it seems like the nonstop frenzy of uh, of pay per view events uh, continues here. As this is what the third now in the last five weeks. Whew. Uh, I say this wholeheartedly just as an expression, but I'm going to need a cigarette after this. Or a vape or something. No, 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 no. No? No. No, 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 no vape? No, no vape. Okay, then. That works. Sorry. Uh, there's so many... There's so... I'll, 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 I'm, I have a very high threshold for Mahoney busting and stuff like that, but the vape, I just... No. No. <laughs> No, no, no dog. Okay, everywhere. thank you, thank you, Twitch Swayla. Con- you don't see, you don't have to put Twitch on everything though. That I, it's, it's part of the branding. Not always, but when it works, Super Twitch Party, yeah, Mister Fanspastic, fine. But sometimes it just, uh, I appreciate it, but uh, sometimes it just doesn't work. I mean, you, you know what it's all about. Merchandising, merchandising. Yes. Where the real money from the movie is made. 
Certainly right about that. All right, let, let's get into things here. We'll get into and money that, in the bank a little bit later here. Let's uh, get into some news and notes right off the bat. And then our second segment, we've got uh, quite an analysis uh, and an ongoing feud that I think <sighs> I teased a little bit last week. Um, yeah, I, I can't remember what I had for breakfast this morning, let alone you know what I did last week. But, um, it's uh, like at the beginning of the show said, I'm running on two hours sleep. I don't know what the hell I'm doing anymore. Well, see, I can't use that as an excuse because I actually got three hours of sleep last night. Upgrade! Yeah, I don't know. I wasn't quite Mike Reed in that regard. All right. Uh, well, let's uh, start off with some good news for the uh, for the ladies. Uh, WWE officially announcing the first four women in the May Young Classic tournament. Mm. Did you get a get a gander at this yet? I I did. I I don't know if they're going if they're announcing if the women they're announcing. Like I have speculation of who they have. But I don't know if they're a part of the first four they've announced. Well, here are the first four. So you have Tony Storm. Okay. Uh, Lacey. Wait, and Tony oh. Storm isn't she the uh, she's the Progress Women's Champion right now? Right? You are absolutely right. The first and reigning Progress Women's Champion over in the UK. Yeah, I was gonna say they're doing a lot of stuff with Progress, um, which is great. Them and ICW. Exactly. So of course she's gonna be one of the first representing. Uh, Lacey Evans. I've heard of Lacey Evans. Yeah, she has been with the WWE Performance Center in NXT since April of last year. Oh, okay. So she's—I mean, she's had some matches and, and things of that nature. But yeah, she's been down in uh, down in Orlando training uh, with the rest of them. Now she's getting an opportunity to shine here in the tournament. Uh, Sarah Logan, another one. Yeah, I've seen her on NXT. She's the, she's like the, um, I guess the the good old girl as you know. She's the country born and raised. Mm-hmm. She signed with uh, with WWE and was with NXT since uh, this past October, and prior to that, trained under Taka Mishinoku. Ooh. And then finally, the uh, the masked Princessa Sughit. I'm I'm pr- I'm butchering the pronunciation on this. Is Where's Elijo the, is De Valero wanna... when we need him? Eh. Uh, S U G E H I T. I do not know. I was going to say, because I know there are other women that have been announced, or not announced, but they're... That, Speculated. Th- well, no, because they're at the Performance Center. Like, they're definitely going to be a part of it. They just haven't officially announced Officially. Them. Oh, okay. I got One you. of them is, uh, well, I don't want to say now, but let's just say I love her, her, uh, her one of her catchphrases because she says she's the girl with the shiniest wizard. Like I'll let know, that sink in. Shining wizard. Yeah, no. Well, I didn't want anybody to... Misconstrue that, or <laughs> misconstrue take, that. If we're gonna go in reference to our thing later, take that out of uh, take that out of context. Yep. Jeff Farmer. Yep. Okay, and if you're going Jeff Farmer or Storage Wars on that one, <laughs> no, it's always gonna be Jeff. It's, it's always, gonna, always gonna be gonna Jeff be, Farmer. Yeah. Well, it's it's, it's not it's not as drawn out then. It's just more of yep. That's it. Just 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 a quick hit. That's all. Yep. Just, yeah, not yep, because then that then you're talking Storage Wars. We're getting way too off topic. We, let's come on. Let's let's. We need to get because there's a lot of stuff we need to get into, and yep. I want to be make sure we get into it all. I'm yep. Sorry. Yep. You're right about that. So uh, yes. Uh, so she came from uh, Monterey, Mexico, and has wrestled for CMLL and AAA over the mm. course of the last 20 years. So she's the one <laughs> bringing experience to the table in the tournament. A uh, little interesting tidbit coming up for. Well, uh, yeah, a couple weeks from now, actually, yeah, two weeks from tomorrow, uh, for the Impact Wrestling Slammiversary event. Have you heard about the commentating team? No. Who is the commentating team? Well, it's going to be former ESPN personality Robert Flores, who is a huge wrestling fan. And was has done wasn't some he stuff with, with um, uh, the NHL Network and the MLB Network? I was going to say, wasn't he also? He did a thing with uh, WWE, didn't he? Or um, or I'm thinking of a different. There are a lot of there are a lot of ESPN. Yeah, a guys lot of those that, ESPN uh, folks that aren't like that weren't with WWE before, like excluding Coachman and and John uh, and Todd Grisham. But yeah, I'm uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think. It's been a, it's been a little while since uh, I don't know. I'll see if I can look it up as we uh, as we go along here. Maybe I'll go to the uh, I don't know some some sort of a we- uh, database or database or something. Anyway, and, uh, yeah, and we'll figure that out. But yeah, Robert Flores is going to be there as well as uh, making a uh, return to TNA, at least in the broadcast booth. Borash? No, no, because he's uh, yeah, he's he's going to be involved. Uh, a oh with, yeah, 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 got yeah, the yeah. Thing going on. No, uh, Don West. <gasps> Brown bag special, Don West. Yeah. Get yes. You. Sorry, I was a little too close to the mic when I screamed that, but yes. 
That's right. Get on the phone. Be dialing. Don West is back in the saddle. Yes. Lovely, lovely. And lovely. if you act now, we'll throw in the Mark McGuire rookie card at no extra charge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. There, there's you no, know, but like seriously, he's good at pimping no, stuff he is, out. No, he is great. He is damn good at what he does. I was watching. It was a fatal four-way X Division like pre-show match. It was for like Bound for Glory 2005, I think, or something like that. It was Roderick Strong, um, Austin Aries, Sanjay Dutt, and uh, Chris. Uh, no, Alex Shelley. My bad. And he was, you know, the first three minutes of Freddy is like, it, he was able to call the match and also still say, and you still have 30 minutes or counting down time to call your pay-per-view provider and order this, like, like a pro, honestly. Well, I mean, yeah, he did the home shop network for all those years. So, I mean, that, that's just, that's instinct to him. That's just, or not even, yeah, that, that's just second nature at this point. Yeah. You know, with that last minute, hey, you know, you, you've got X amount of time to call before this deal closes. I mean, that's just right in his wheelhouse. <laughs> and Flores has not done anything with WWE. He is just a noted longtime fan of professional wrestling and was with uh, ESPN from 2005 until last year. And is the proud owner of a prized Louisville Slugger Ric Flair model bat autographed <laughs> by the Nature Boy himself. Oh, oh he had a model bat for... Apparently. Damn. <laughs> Who knew? I, I know I didn't. I never knew I didn't. Yeah, exactly. Uh, WWE issued a press release uh, to announce their next live event in China coming up on <laughs> September 17th. Uh, they'll be in Shenzhen for the first time as they head to the Shenzhen <clears throat> Bay Sports Center Arena. Uh, and pretty interesting of note, the last 12 months have been a very... Uh, well, it's been a period of significant activity for WWE in China. <laughs> Uh, between them, uh, let's just kind of run a few of these down here. Reaching an exclusive multi-year agreement with PPTV to live stream its flagship shows, Raw and SmackDown, in Mandarin. Mmm. Very nice. Uh, they also signed eight Chinese athletes to developmental contracts to train at the WWE Performance Center, including the first ever Chinese WWE superstar, Tian Bing. Yeah, I was going to say, he was already. they already announced that he was signed, right? Mm-hmm. They, they or is this, or is this just like a, a well, recap? This is just a recap. Everything. This is just a recap of all the stuff they've done over the last year in terms of uh, interaction with with uh, the country of China. Uh, they returned with its first live event in three years uh, with a show at the Mercedes Benz Arena in Shanghai. Uh, they distributed WrestleMania live in China for the first time ever via pay per view on PPTV Sports. Damn. And they showcased Tian Bing as he made his WrestleMania debut in the Andre the Giant yeah, Memorial gonna, Battle Royal. I, I think he made a few eliminations too, right? And that was a big that was a big deal. And they're really good at cornering a market for that sort of stuff. Um, well, we've talked about India in the past and China. I mean, those are the two populous <clears throat> most, countries yeah, in most the entire world. Yeah, most countries in the world, and they're able to good good on them because you know the ratings may not be, you know doing as well back here but they're able to corner i think it's maybe they're focusing on the international markets before they go back you know back to domestic yeah i mean you you look at the population i mean yeah china and india are one and two a distant one you know far and above i mean the united states is the third most populous country in in the world and we're at 325 million India has one point, th- almost a billion more people, and a lot of them are WWE fans. And then China, just over top of them, by about oh sixty six million or so. Mm-hmm. But who's counting? But yeah, between those two um, countries, you're looking I, at a I combined population. Census, I would hope the census is counting. But well, yeah, where do you think I'm getting this info, info from? <laughs> but, but yeah, between those two countries, you're looking at two point seven, or just over two point seven billion people. Potent, you know, potential viewers. I mean, that's almost 36% of the world population between those two countries. Jeez. Yeah, it's amazing when you look at those statistics. So, of course, they're going to showcase and corner that. Now, meanwhile, over here in the States, at least television-wise, uh, oof. Not, no es bueno. Uh, no, or any other language. Uh, this past Monday's Raw scoring a 1.75 rating, down from the <laughs> 2.04 from last week. Averaging just over 2.5 million viewers, down from the almost 3 million viewers last week. Yeah, drop of 452,000 viewers between last week and, uh, and this week. 
Uh, Raw having stiff competition from the deciding game of the NBA Finals between the Cleveland Cavaliers and champion Golden State Warriors. So that, I think, having a lot to do with it. So it'll be interesting to see how they rebound this coming Monday with no competition from either the NBA or or NHL as both of those uh, seasons have wrapped up with their respective championships. I was going to say, and Raw was really good this Monday, too. It really was. Um, Just with the... It got back to that... It was like the days of old with the soap opera-esque sort of things. Or I'm I'm talking about, like, yeah. And it it had different stories intertwining, and it was really good um, the past couple weeks. I mean, it's gotten me really hyped. I was already hyped for Joe versus Lesnar before, and now I'm just even more, you know, Mahoney's to the wall, ready to see this fight. And that's what they should treat it like, as a fight. As opposed to a match. And, and we'll, we'll see how far they can go with that, but uh, time will certainly tell on that. Anyway, uh, we got to take care of our first time out here. Uh, coming up, we'll uh, talk about where Mauro Ranallo's ending up, at least in the short term. Also, a uh, noted d- uh, spouse of a WWE superstar uh, filing for Splitsville. We'll let you know all about that <clears throat> yes. and uh, the controversy behind it. And speaking of controversy, well, uh, two individuals oh, who have in. no we're leading into love the second segment with that for each other. We are and, so uh, leading into the second second. They've segment They've certainly been going at it the last uh, week and change, and we'll uh, we'll get into all of that. But. Uh, First, got to let you know about uh, George's Cards and Collectibles. They've got more signings coming your way coming up on Saturday, July 8th. That is just three weeks from today. That's from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. Former WWE stars King Kong Bundy and one half of the Vaude Villains, Simon Gotch. Simon Grimm. Yeah. Simon Grimm, yeah. That's formerly known, formerly as, Simon. known as Simon Gotch, yes. yes. FKA as the... FKA Simon Gotch. As the people say these days... Yeah, that's become a very big thing. They're very noted in this case. Uh, Also of note, George's has two locations for all of your cards and collectibles needs, including their original store at 7755 New Falls Road in Levittown, and in the Neshaminy Mall in the movie theater wing. And check them out this weekend as the Neshaminy Mall Sports Cards and Collectibles Festival going on all this weekend at the Neshaminy Mall. Uh, you just missed a uh, Phillies great that that ended at the uh, the top of this past hour, but uh, lots of different uh, things just in time to get something for uh, Pops for Father's Day tomorrow, last-minute shopping. Not a bad idea, so head on over. And for more information about George's Cards and Collectibles, go to georgescollectibles.com and follow George's Cards and Collectibles on Facebook. So we'll be back with... Uh, Some very interesting stuff on the other side here on Pro Wrestling Weekly on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Do you have ringing, hissing, buzzing, or pulsing in your ears? Then you are probably suffering from tinnitus. Over 60 million Americans experience tinnitus. That's one in five people. You don't have to just live with it. Take control of your tinnitus and rediscover life without constant ringing in your ears by calling the Hearing Center of Bucks County at 215-310-5237. Find out about the brand new, state-of-the-art AGX Tinnitus Management System. The tinnitus experts at the Hearing Center of Bucks County, celebrating over 30 years of providing outstanding personalized hearing care, will evaluate if this new technology solution is appropriate for you. Find out if this is your answer for ringing in the ears. Call the Hearing Center of Bucks County at 215-310-5237. Online at BucksCountyHearing.com. Phillies fans, if you want to get inside the game, inside the team, and inside the strategy, then we've got you covered. Tune in to the Baseball Insiders, presented by SEPTA every Sunday following Phillies baseball. Former Phillies All-Stars Ricky Vitalico and Tommy Green join host Phillies Director of Fun and Games John Brazier to recap all the action and look ahead to what's coming up for the fight in Phils. The Baseball Insiders, presented by SEPTA, right here on 1490 WBCB and video stream live at WBCB1490.com. All of us want to make a difference. As veterans, we committed to protect our country. We served and sacrificed for the things that mattered most. Those experiences shaped our lives. Now we're husbands, wives, parents, and friends. And sometimes we forget that the biggest challenge can be asking for support. The Veterans Crisis Line is here for veterans. Dial 1-800-273-8255 and press 1. It matters. 
Another super summer of soccer is sizzling. The Philadelphia Union are hosting the Beast of the East at Talent Energy Stadium on Father's Day, June 18. It's also demolition night. Philadelphia Union hosts New York Red Bulls in a battle that's already raging. Come show these New Yorkers how little we like them. Take a whack with a sledgehammer at a Red Bulls themed car and get in on all the fun along Toyota Plaza before the match. Good seats are still available at PhiladelphiaUnion.com slash tickets. Union versus Red Bulls this Sunday, June 18th, 5 p.m. at Talent Energy Stadium. See, he's oh, got man. the Luigi death stare from Franz. So might have I didn't it. give you the Luigi death stare. That's Shh, not true. You're breaking cave <laughs> Breaking cave <K-fabe. laughs> Gonna break something else during this commercial. There we All go. Right. That's what I like to see. And now, more Pro Wrestling Weekly with your hosts, Ferran Derry and Lucas DeSangro. Are so we right. getting into that controversy again? <laughs> Ugh, I know how it feels, and it's not fun. <laughs> Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Alongside Lucas Twitch DeSangro, I'm Ferran Derry, and uh, I'd be remiss, Lucas, if I uh, didn't show some love to your alma mater. Uh, congrats yeah. to the Class 6A 2017 state champion Pensbury baseball team. I was gonna, I'm was i really happy uh, for Coach Joe Pay- Pet. Pacey. Pacey. So, yep. Pacey. I, I thought know. I was. I thought I was mispronouncing it. Then I realized I was pronouncing it right. It's you, you corrected your correction though, and now you're yeah. good. Uh, See, one year I've, away, and you just forget yeah, all this. I stuff. I was going to say because I've I've known Pacey for my four years. He was my uh, case manager for my IEP, which is something for kids with learning disabilities. So he's I've you know he's always been a great guy. And I'm really happy for him. He finally won a state title. So. Cheers to you, buddy. Yeah, they, they don't exactly. Yeah, state state <laughs> titles just aren't you know Love doled you, out uh, yeah. on a f- <laughs> just, not, just doled out to everybody. State state trophies and state titles are definitely not participation trophies. That's for thank, sure. Nope, not at all. Okay, you 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 sounded like you were about to hold back on a diatribe. No, I was saying no. Like, no oh, okay. Not at all. <laughs> all right. Well, let's. Um, Okay, I know that you wanted to lead off with this, but we got to bring gotta it. Get, to, we we got to go to our local correspondent. Yeah, man. we have to go to our local correspondent Love Ed from death. Northeast Philly first before we get into the debauchery here. Ed, welcome to Pro Wrestling Weekly. Good afternoon. How did you like the show last week? Oh yes, the uh, the Wildcat, Wildcat Sports Wrestling. It was yes, great. that was uh, it was a, a very <laughs> fun, wild. Uh, yeah, it lived up to its name. That's for sure. And it was great to see a mix of the stars of Wildcat Sports Wrestling and the stars of the MFPW, uh, and it was a lot of fun just to be able to be in that atmosphere in the 2300 arena. I was going to say props to LSG for that great match between him, Homicide, and uh, Mike Dell. Yeah. And they also had uh, a Luke Hawks in the main event, I think. Yeah, against Stevie Richards. Yes. Yeah, Stevie Richards, no stranger to that South Philadelphia area. And no stranger to main events either. Oh, that too. If we're going to... Make a. Oh, are you you giving a subtle prelude to next week? I mean, I, it wasn't. Well, now that I realize it, I mean, it wasn't intended, but sure. Yeah, that brilliant on your part. Thank you. Yeah, it a, was uh, an it was an idiot savant sort of move, which is also sort of preluding uh, our conversation next. I was gonna say that sounds. That almost sounds like that should be our tag team name. You're the idiot, and I'm the savant in this. Well, case. no, an idiot savant is one I, person. I, I'm well. Were you really about to school me on what an idiot savant is? I'm well, yeah, because well I'm an aware. idiot savant. The idiot is the first part in the word, and the most prominent in your case. Anyway, Ed, wow. go on. Wow, uh, heat, brother. Were you in the building when Crowbar was wrestling? Um, yes. Oh yeah, we were in the, the, we were opening, there the whole time. The opening match. Yeah, we were there the whole time. Yeah, he looked different to me. Well, uh. Father Time changes yeah. things of us all. We'll Wait, just, I was going to uh, say we'll Crowbar. Am I missing something? What? What did he? Did he wrestle on things before? Or? Well, well, yeah. I mean, he rest, uh, I'm sorry. This us, was my. Yeah. Well, this was my. Wait, was this was my? Yeah, this was like my first exposure to Crowbar. Yeah, I mean, he's been around for. I mean, he's. Let me put it this way. He's one of. The oh, he was few, in WCW, wasn't he? Am I thinking correctly? He, he was in a. Yeah, back then. Let me put it this way: He is one of five wrestlers who have who has had matches in <clears throat> WWE, WCW, ECW, TNA, and Ring of Honor. Damn. Oh, so that would explain why he was yeah, why a lot. But of them... he's also yeah he's I mean he's in his mid forties and hmm. hasn't been as yeah yeah. I he, didn't think he looked that bad. I mean, 
I didn't think he looked bad. Well, he looked bad. different. I, I think maybe because we haven't seen him on TV fairly recently, I think that might... I mean, the last time that he was on TV was... what uh, he, he was at the 2013 TNA One Night Only uh, Hardcore Justice 2. He was in a hardcore battle royal that was won by Shark Boy, but... Really, apart from that, I mean, he hasn't been on TV since 2003. So I think, yeah, the, that almost 15-year absence from television will do that. <laughs> uh, Game Changer is in Allentown next weekend with a uh, with a 7 p.m. bell time. Joey Janela's, uh, well, not, mm-hmm. I don't think it's Joey Janela's promotion, but that's who's one of the most prominent stars. I think stars. that's Sandy. Sa- really? I'm not actually sure. Oh, well, I could believe it. I mean, I, I thought he was... I don't actually run some promotion. Teddy Hart's on it, Nick Cage, Matt Tremont. Yep, yeah, I could believe that Sandig was a part of it. Yeah, Ricky Steamboat, Angelina Love, and Velvet Sky. Wait, did you say Ricky or Richie? Because I'm trying to figure yeah, out, like... Ricky. Ricky. I was going to say, whatever happened to Richie Steamboat? I've seen him on a lot of old episodes of NXT, but... Uh, I think an injury, maybe? I'll, 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 I'll go to the research on that. Uh, Wrestle Factory has a show tomorrow afternoon in Northeast Valley. Roy Gulak and Mike Quackenbush are in a tournament. Oh, it's, uh, it's Chikara, right? It's Chikara. June 18th, the Johnny Kid Invitational. <laughs> okay, that should be a lot of fun as well. Yeah, 1 p.m. Unfortunately, I won't be able to make it as uh, I've got a previous booking, but uh, <laughs> it should be a lot of fun nonetheless. AJ Styles is going to be in Freehold, New Jersey, in July for autograph signing. Oh, is that over at uh, Adventureland? Uh, I play America. Oh, oh, that's right. The uh, that's right. I play America. I'm, I'm, I'm getting. Yeah, I know. There's, there's a few of those over there, and I get them confused. I seldom, often, I seldom venture into that, uh, that central, uh, yeah, that that central part of Jersey. Yeah. And I think I, someone told me that the House of Hardcore might be doing a show there too. <laughs> hmm. I was gonna say they have one in August for back at the arena, right? Because that's yeah. when the Icons of Collector Fest is gonna be. Yes. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's, I mean, there's so much that's going on with that, and that's just kind of uh, gained so much momentum. I mean, they're they're going to Australia. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, that's uh, a big deal. Actually, uh, that that's tonight. In fact, um, yeah, yeah, they're in Sydney tonight. They're in Perth tomorrow, and then uh, next weekend they're in Melbourne and Adelaide. So yeah, that's uh, but that's that's right on there, and uh, yeah, and then they'll be making their way back here uh, stateside for. I think it's uh, thirty. Oh yeah, for thirty for thirty two. Oh yeah, you're right. There we go. Uh, I play America and Freehold on August eleventh, and then that and then the next night, August twelfth, they're going to be at the arena. So they're uh, that's their their back to back nights there they'll be uh, that friday night at the i play america and then saturday night the 12th they'll be at the 2300 arena and battleground champion well, not championship battleground pay per view in philly oh yeah it'll be july 23rd yep <clears throat> gosh crazy to think of that's uh, about a little more than a month away and that looks like it's going to be good card yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll definitely see. We're uh, we're just over five weeks out from Battleground. Is that what is that? Is, is that going to be? Is that Raw or SmackDown pay per view? I What's, think that's a SmackDown. Well, yeah, because yeah, Raw's got great balls of fire, right? Yes, <laughs> we've uh, <laughs> we've had a lot of fun talking about that over the course of yeah. No, that is a uh, SmackDown branded event uh, for the Wells Fargo Center five Ooh. weeks from tomorrow. Ooh. Ooh. So Nakamura and AJ Styles and Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens potentially all, if you don't put them in a match, not not together, but singularly, if you don't put them all in a match in Philly, oh, <clears throat> should be a lot of fun. And money, in, money in the bank, I think is coming up too. This well, Sunday. yeah, money, money in the bank's tomorrow. Uh, I'm thinking about something else then. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, they're, they're, as I said, this is a run of, uh, of pay-per-view events. I mean, we've got Money in the Bank uh, coming up tomorrow, and then on the 2nd of July is, T- uh, is Impact Wrestling Slammiversary. Then one week after that is Great Balls of Fire, the Raw-branded pay-per-view. Goodness gracious. Two weeks after that is Battleground, <clears throat> and then you get into August with SummerSlam. So it's just over the you know pretty much now through battleground. I mean you're you're looking at uh, quite a few different uh, you know quite a number of pay per views here. Let's see here. It's a uh, 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 that's uh, six. Basically, yeah, you're gonna have six pay per views within a ten week span. <laughs> yeah, that's that. So this is yeah this is very clustered here as we hit the uh, late spring early summer. Samoa Joe versus Lesnar—that's gonna be interesting. Oh, it's I'm I'm hyped. I'm so hyped. They should save that for SummerSlam, I think. <laughs> I don't because I well I think they're gonna do um, I mean I think Braun should be healed up by then. I think they that's probably what they're doing. Lesnar versus Braun for the title. Maybe because Braun and then maybe Braun, uh, Lesnar drops the title to Braun. I don't know. Or maybe they're gonna keep him title on him for a while, but. Because Braun's supposed to get his title shot, you know? Very possible. Yeah. That's about it. All righty. Uh, thank you so much for the look at the local scene here. And, uh, 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 yeah, much appreciated, Ed, from Northeast Philly. Uh, there's certainly a lot to uh, to look into here. And uh, to answer the question from earlier regarding Richie Steamboat, he had suffered a back injury uh, during the November 2012 episode of NXT. Uh, and he required surgery for it and was released a year later from his WWE contract. Um, Is he not wrestling but anymore? He, yeah, I mean, th- there's been conflicting. I mean, in April two years ago, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, his father, said that due to the back injury and subsequent surgery that Richie Steamboat would not be able to wrestle again. But in October of this past October... Uh, the younger Steamboat said, I feel good. My back feels good. I've been really or really been listening to my body and how I feel. I just feel like I need to give back. I don't know. We'll see what happens. So he has been... Confli- he is not- well, he, yeah, he has been absent, but he has not officially retired, I guess is the, yeah. uh, the best way to put it. He is, he's just been absent for quite a while. All right, well... You know what? I think we're just going to take an early break and kind of get everything here in the third segment because we're already at that time. That's just yep. how fast and furious things roll here. Yep. Plus, that way you can you can get the lead off a segment like you had wanted, and it works out all the best. See? Yep. It's as if I planned this. <laughs> but I first got to let you know. <laughs> oh, this should uh, this should certainly be a lot of fun. Oh, I wish I had this ready to go. Oh well, I guess. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, forget it. All right. Things will be considerably acceptable today at the Broken Goblet Brewery, 1500 Grundy's Lane in Bristol, PA. Tonight is the second annual We Love the 80s celebration, featuring live music from ex-team teen heartthrob Esta B and his backing boy band. Dress up in some period-specific garb for totally tubular prizes all day, and don't act like you don't have any leg warmers or Jenkos. We know the truth. Also, it has been announced... Monsoon or Shine, Saturday, July 15th from 3 until 8 p.m., the anniversary party known as Goblet Stock. Yes, yep. over 25 beers, food trucks, live music, and it's free to attend. Free! Yeah. It's free. There should be no excuses. Well, we may have to show up late to the arena then if that's the case because we, we have a, an event at the MFPW that night. Okay, there are some excuses. There are some excuses, exactly. <laughs> But as an irregular member, I can get in an hour earlier. So if I go from two to... Well, all right. We'll discuss that later. Yeah, we're running out of time. You're right. Uh, Also, last night was the latest bottle release called 11 Minutes. It's a Belgian wit brewed with rosemary. Uh, They've certainly done stranger things. Try it on tap while it lasts. I see what you did there. That's exactly what they did there, too. Uh, Plus, the Broken Goblet has expanded its hours. That's right. The Broken Goblet now open on Tuesdays. From 5 to 11 p.m., same with Wednesday and Thursday. Fridays are still 3 to midnight. Saturdays are still noon to midnight, which reminds me i got to talk to Mike about getting over there for a beer and body slam uh, remote. And Sundays are now noon to 8 p.m. Just a few reasons why it's always a good time at the Broken Goblet Brewery, 1500 Grundy's Lane in Bristol, PA. Broken Goblet Brewing, the semi-official brewery of Pro Wrestling Weekly, 
please enjoy responsibly. Coming back, we've got the uh, the feud to put you in the mood and a whole bunch more here on Pro Wrestling Weekly on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Bristol Riverside Theater kicks off their 2017 Summer Music Fest with Rosemary Clooney and Friends, Come On At My House, June 15th through the 25th. Known as the Golden Age of Pop, the 1950s gave a whole new meaning to the term girl power. You'll be dancing in the aisles in the pop music of the 50s with songs from Doris Day, Patti Page, K-Star, Teresa Brewer, and of course, Rosemary Clooney, just to name a few. For tickets, visit brtstage.org or call 215-785-0100. All commentators heard on WBCB express their own views. Their opinions are not necessarily those of others on WBCB, including the staff and management. Phillies PA announcer Dan Baker asking you to join me and former Philly slugger Greg the Bull Luzinski for the Independence Blue Cross Bull Session presented by Gage Fiore. Attorneys at FightForYou.com every Monday, 6 to 7 p.m. We'll talk Phillies baseball with a different guest each week. Go to WBCB1490.com to check show locations and guest information each week. The Independence Blue Cross Bull Session, presented by Gage Fiore. Attorneys at FightForYou.com every Monday at 6 p.m. on 1490 WBCB and 610 Sports. Philly never stops moving. We're punching the clock. We're burning the midnight oil. We're morning people and late night legends. Our time is everything. That's why we take SEPTA. It's more than a ride. It's 5 or 10 or 30 minutes of me time. Time to text mom, crush a crossword, catch the zombie finale, or nap like a boss. All while we're getting into town, out of town, and all around town. SEPTA is our freedom. SEPTA is our Philly. SEPTA is how we roll. Visit iSEPTAPhilly.com to roll with us. Experience the spirit of giving when you enter Flowers by Jenny Lynn. Whether it's for a wedding, a birthday, or just an I'm thinking of you, Flowers by Jenny Lynn has the perfect gift. Feast your eyes on the bright hues of the season in their fresh flower department. They also carry a wide variety of flowers daily from around the world, including tropical flowers, wild flowers, roses, and seasonal floral mixes for every taste. Flowers by Jenny Lynn also carries unique gifts like gourmet jams, candies, and cookies. Serving the area for over 25 years, Flowers by Jenny Lynn is your Fairless Hills florist. Stop by their beautiful shop to see for yourself, located at 100 Trenton Road in Fairless Hills, or check them out online at flowersbyjennylynn.com. Give them a call today at 1-800-547-4551. The number again is 1-800-547-4551. Flowers by Jenny Lynn, the art of fresh flowers. Pro Wrestling Weekly presents Today in Wrestling History, June 17. On this date in 1996, WCW Monday Nitro aired live from Richmond, Virginia. In the main event, the Giant pinned Scott Steiner. On this date in 2002, WWE Monday Night Raw aired live from Oakland, California. In the main event, Brock Lesnar pinned Booker T in a King of the Ring quarterfinal match. On this date in 2007, TNA held its Slammiversary pay-per-view. In the main event, Kurt Angle defeated AJ Styles, Chris Harris, Christian Cage, and Samoa Joe in a King of the Mountain match to win the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. On this date in 2012, WWE held its No Way Out pay-per-view. In the main event, John Cena defeated The Big Show in a steel cage match. Due to the match stipulation, then Raw General Manager John Laurinaitis was fired. This has been Today in Wrestling History, June 17. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Alongside Lucas Twitch DeSangro, I am Ferran Derry, and I, we, yeah, I was I'm going to leave I, you right onto this here because you've been just jonesing just, and chomping as soon at the as bit I, for this. I'll, I'll give it to you as soon as I'm done with this because I just, folks, uh, the past few decades we've had a lot of talk about dream matches, what could have been what had been and what had been disappointed and, you know, what I've been disappointed in. You know, people talk about one, always wanting to see Ali versus uh, Mike Tyson. You know, people wanted to see Pacquiao versus Mayweather and that ended up just being a, an 18 round uh, middle school dance. They were hugging half the time. I'm sure McGregor 
and Mayweather's going to be a disappointment because Mayweather is going to take him to four rounds when we all know because Mayweather's been doing this for a long time. As much as I don't like him, I respect him. He can knock him out in half in 30 seconds into the round one. But I guarantee you there is one feud, one fight, that if I were to throw down money, if I were to put it on pay-per-view, that I would gladly throw down a few dead presidents to see Vince Russo fight Jim Cornette. Put it in the Thunderdome. Two men that have hated each other since 97, where it all goes back to, Fran. You know what I'm talking about. Yes, I do. Jim Cornette's quoted to say that he and Russo are polar opposites. He's a northerner, I'm a southerner. Are you really about to... <sighs> yeah, I'm, a, I'm an atheist, he's a Christian. He hates wrestling, I love wrestling. If one of us... What? Are you... you if one of us was a black lesbian nun, we'd meet on the other side of the earth because we're so polar opposite. Yes, that's right. The feud to put you in the mood between good old Corny and Vinnie Rue. Ferran, back to you. Yes, no love lost between the uh, <laughs> between the two of them. I just want and, you to, uh, can we just save that before we, and you can cut this part out, but can we save at least this segment and put it also up on a separate thing in YouTube? Because I'm so proud we'll of that. See. That was off the top of my head. Uh, anyway. You, congratulations, you got your shtick in. Thank you. Anyway, yes, the uh, the the lack of love lost between Jim Cornette and Vince Russo. Well, it looks like it's finally reached an entertaining boiling point. Uh, on Cornette's podcast a week ago, he had this profanity laced challenge that he issued to Russo. So you want to make challenges about going on people's podcasts and giving the money to charity and all this other stuff. Cause you know, that ain't going to happen. Cause we got nothing to talk about, but I'm making you a legitimate offer. I swear on my mother's grave. If you give me a date, a time and an address, I will meet you there and I will bring five grand in cash. As long as the rules are no cops, no guns and no knives. And what happens, happens. And if you don't f take me up on that, you piece of sh then shut your f liquor from now on. Because I'm sick and f fed up with you, and everybody else is too. You've been found out. Nobody believes in you anymore. Everybody knows what you're all about. You've stabbed everybody in the back you've ever worked with. You've killed guys' careers with your goofy gimmicks. You've made the wrestling business a f joke with your f ADD booking and your Jerry Springer show and most of all you're a piece of and I will prove it send me the date the time and the place or shut the up well yeah um yes <laughs> yes a thousand times yes you love you some Jim Cornette that's for sure I love him not just for the rants because he truly is passionate about this business and while I I will wholeheartedly Admit, I don't agree with everything he has to say about, you know, guys like Kevin Owens. I mean, Joey Ryan, I'm sort of iffy on, but like in the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega because they're damn good at what they do. But, you know, just he loves the wrestling business. He's passionate about it as opposed to Vince Russo. And we'll get to Russo in a second. Is, is After that tirade, is Ted Efall looking out the window for El Jefe Roberto, the program director, to come in here? Is that uh, what's going on? Yeah, he's... Uh... <laughs> He's, his hand is clutched against his chest. He's, he's, he's fanning his brow. He was a little concerned, just to say the least, there. He's like, get these two out of here. What are they doing? They're killing They're the business. They're killing the business. They're killing the business, Ripper. Killing the business. Well, anyway, Vince Russo, uh, the next day, he issued a response to Cornette, uh, to Cornette, admitting that he's afraid of him and his, quote, barn door wide ass. Oh, God. His Kamala belly... Gumby-like arms and ripped, chiseled stomach. <clears throat> he also said that Jim thinks that uh, we're in Memphis, circa 1970, with uh, we're in five thousand dollars actually meant something. Hmm, means yeah. something to me. Huh? I was gonna say that's yeah. five thousand dollars. That's five thousand dollars. Yeah, but I don't know if I'd go to a, a basically a, a fight to you know bludgeoning almost death because of I'm a college student and an independent professional wrestler. I need a loan to file for even being considered broke. I would, yeah, I'd take the 5000 Hmm. Well, you're going to give him a time, a date, and an address. No. Uh, 
But you don't have. Yeah. We not neither of us have five thousand dollars, so it'd just be like a. Well, backyard. I might give it to Jim, and you and Jim say, can be, go it'd at be it. Be a backyard. No, because I like Cornette. <laughs> I really do. Uh, Russo felt that Jim wanted an apology, so he apologized for Cornette blowing out his knees when he fell off a scaffold because he's a mark who didn't know how to take a bump. I should have said a mock who didn't know how to take a bump. For putting for him Pot putting calling the kettle black, but okay. For him putting Smoky Mountain Wrestling out of business, for being fired from ROH for a public emotional outburst, being fired from WWE for assaulting another employee. For Russo not believing the Dukes of Hazard is a reality show, uh, that's just him what? taking a that's just taking a pot what? shot at his uh, at Look, his. Look, uh, man, I gotta say, uh, let me let me yeah, we're uh, uh, that he never went on national TV and dressed like the village idiot, which I think that's referring to his colorful ja- suit jackets and pants and ties and things of that nature, which he that, made a that lot never of money really doing. matched. Uh, that he never asked a wrestler to chew on Alka-Seltzer so it would appear like he's foaming at the mouth. And most importantly, for Russo setting ratings records at both WWE and TNA and raising ratings at WCW the nine months he was there and finally apologizing for both Dixie Carter and Vincent Kennedy McMahon choosing Russo over Cornette. Because at the end of the day... 18 years later, that is what this is all about. It sticks in your craw because no matter what you do, no matter what you say, no matter what asinine promo you cut, it does not go away. From a creative standpoint, the numbers clearly dictate I was better than you. And I know that is hard for you to accept. And I know that is hard for you to deal with. So that is why from the bottom of my heart, I apologize. I am sorry. And I hope from this point on, we can move forward. Um, Well, (laughs) you know, the numbers don't lie, but I think Vince Russo does. Uh, Just here. Here's the thing, though, because I take well, oh, piping hot take. Oh, pipe bomb. Yeah, we're going to all the cliches. But, like. Right. You, you going to sit Indian style for this one? Do you want me to lower the mic to the floor for you? I have a lot of things. No, I'm just. It's. You know why you did so well with WWE, uh, Vince? Yep. You know why? Because as much as, you know, Vincent Kennedy McMahon can be a little bit crazy, he's still good at damn good at what he does and he's able to say to those 24 B movie ripoffs that's stupid but hey these two things sure I'll take that the and then you went and took all the credit and went to WCW and said yeah it's all responsible for me and then they didn't put you on a leash and they realized the only reason you were good with WWE because Vince McMahon was there to go that's stupid no we're not doing that yeah we'll do that but no stop it you you put in and Vin, Dixie Carter hired you, and then fired you, but was still calling you in secret because she found if she if Spike TV found out which they did that Vince Russo was still involved, they were going to cancel Impact, which they did. Okay, we're uh, we're <laughs> all right. I think we're still on the air here now. Yeah, no, uh, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to. Uh, um, I'm gonna stop there because if I keep talking, I'm gonna. You're gonna cut qu- into Country Roads with Ted Eiffel. Well, no, I'm gonna channel my cornet and accidentally start. Oh yeah, then you'll need me to hover over the dump button. Yeah, then you'll really need to hover over it, like a UFO. Oh, sweet mercy. Mm, that's why I'm stopping. All right. Well, Cornette ended up uh, just the day before yesterday uh, <laughs> firing back. Please tell me you have clip. Of course I do. Yes. Well, here it is. Vince Russo has defeated me. Scorched me. I'm here to admit it. I'm a beaten man. Vince Russo is the winner of this thing. Because last week, everybody knows it made a lot of news. I came out and I made a challenge. Since he had talked about wanting to meet me face to face on his show or on my show or on a neutral show, face to face, man to man. I offered to. I offered to meet him. Place of his choosing. Just not for public consumption. 
No fans, no tickets being sold, no profit being made off of it, no cops, no guns, no knives. What happens, happens. And a large cash amount that I would have with me uh, for him to show up if, if he could take it away from me. And he responded. He responded to all of that as, as any true man would, defending his honor and the honor of his wife and his family with a blistering comedy routine. He showed me the error of my ways. He blistered me with one-liners straight out of the Henny Youngman book. As a matter of fact, he, he showed me the difference in how to handle things because the last time that a guy with me that bad and said horrible things about me and with my business and insulted my wife and said things about her on my answer machine, I, I took a baseball bat to two of that guy's stooges and then I tried to run that, that guy over with my car in broad daylight on the busiest street in Knoxville. But Vince Russo showed me how I should respond to something like that. He responded with shtick. But not just any shtick. No, no, it, it was it was shtick for the ages. It was shtick that would have made any Borscht Belt comic working a senior citizen's home in the Catskills proud. Jackie Mason, Norm Crosby, they could not touch this guy. And I am suitably chastened. I've got to, I've got to admit the defeat, Vince. You're clearly the better man. And I just want you to know, Vince, from the bottom of my heart, and this statement is, couldn't be anything but truth. To thank you for showing me the error of my ways and putting me in my place. That's something for you. I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to tell you what it is right here, right now. You're, you're going to have to wait to find out, you know, as you know, you don't, tell presents ahead of time and i don't know when i'm going to get a chance to give it to you since I, I i don't know where you live yet but i assure you vince russo this is not an empty promise i got something for you and i'm going to give it to you and like all the best presents this is probably going to be a surprise you might you might even say that you're never going to see this coming it's going to be a shock somewhere sometime i'm going to give it to you you deserve this, and you're going to get exactly what you deserve. Because they say it's better to give than to receive, Vince. And in this case, that couldn't be more true. So I can't wait. I promise. I promise you. I promise you. I cannot wait to give it to you. And I can't wait to see the look on your face when you get it. Because wow. I have a very particular set of skills. Skills that I've acquired over a very long period that make me a nightmare for people like you. And Vince Russo, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will surprise you. Okay, well, somehow in the next uh, minute and 50 seconds, we're going to have to get our predictions, three stories, and birthdays, and that's not all going well, to happen. Well, just predictions, just predictions and bir uh, birthdays. Uh, yeah, no. Because I'll, I'll say this. Okay, so... We'll put our predictions up on the Facebook page. Um... Yeah, let's let's just get into uh, into birthdays here. Birthdays. There we go. Whee! Yeah, quick one. All right. On this date in 1968, Minoru Suzuki was born. Ooh. The freelance Japanese wrestler from Pro Wrestling Noah, All Japan Pro Wrestling, and currently in New Japan Pro Wrestling as the reigning Never Open Weight Champion, turns 49 today. Mm. And on this date in 1965, Herman Stevens Jr. was born. This one will throw you for a loop. The former WWF and WCW pro wrestling manager known uh, in WCW as Jay Biggs, but best known from the WWF as Clarence Mason, turns 52 today. Mm. He was the wrestling attorney that was kind of playing off of the whole Johnny Cochran thing back in the mid-90s. He didn't start dropping racial slurs, did he? No, but he was an instrumental part of the uh, the very beginnings of the Nation of Domination. Uh, of course he was. Yeah. And the Brucey bonus, two of them for you. On this date in 1943, Barry Allen Pincus was born. The singer and man who writes the songs, creating hits like Mandy, Looks Like We Made It, Copacabana, and Read Him and Weep, better known as Barry Manilow, turned 74 today. Mm. And on this date in 1980, going to the sports world, Venus Ebony Star Williams was born. The four-time Olympic gold medal winner and five-time Wimbledon champion tennis player turns 37 today. And no, she's not old. 
All right, that's going to do it for us here. We'll be back next week. Uh, we're on our way down to the uh, MFPW Arena for a uh, huge night of action tonight. Looking forward to that. And stay tuned for Teddy Fawz. He's got Country Roads coming your way next. Until next week, play us out, Nutsy. One o'clock and all's well. Serving you better than ever before. This is 1490 WBCB.